And the name of this new album, and please forgive me because I have to refer to it because it's so long, yeah. is Tales from the Realm of the Queen of Pentacles. Can That's... you first of all explain the title to me? Yeah, sure. Um, the Queen of Pentacles is one of the characters in the tarot cards. And the pentacles are, is the suit of the real world, the actual material, physical world. So the Queen of Pentacles is the queen of all material things. She's the queen of wealth, of money, of the body. Um, so she can be a very nurturing kind of character, but she can also be kind of greedy and materialistic. So um, that idea pops up in a couple of songs. Mm. Um, so that's why I called it Tales from the Realm of the Queen of Pentacles. It's actually about the real world, the spirit world, and how they mix together. There's a couple of songs that, that uh, mention the idea of wealth and what is its value. Mm -hmm. what, what is the value of the material world as opposed to the spiritual world. Um, that comes up in a few songs. And the other I, uh, reason I chose it was because I wanted a bit of luck. Mm -hmm. You know, sometimes what you name an album, you call it forth. Uh, on the 99.9 .9 Fahrenheit Degrees Tour, everyone got sick. Um, in the Days of Open Hand Tour, we lost a ton of money. Um, so I was just hoping okay. that the Queen of Pentacles would be good to me on this. Um, so far, so good? So far, not too bad, yeah. yeah. I've been reading somewhere that the way you wrote uh, for this record, you were playing stuff into your iPhone. Yeah, singing mostly, mm -hmm. melodies, bits of, of tunes as they came to me, um, lyrics mm -hmm. as they come to me. Uh, I have less time than I used to. I used uh, to have big chunks of time and now for some reason I just never seemed, I don't have four hours to sit yeah. and write the song from beginning to end. I have bits and pieces of time here and there. So I find that the technology works well to mm. sing it into my iPhone. Well, I'll choose a couple of songs from the record and then I'll move on. But um, first of all, uh, Never Wear White. Yeah. Um, true story? <laughs> yeah. Uh, although, actually, if you look back at, if you go on Getty Images or one of those things, you'll find a few pictures here and there of me trying to wear white. Mm -hmm. um, I've always felt that I never actually wore it very successfully. Mm -hmm. um, I do love black. It's my favorite color to wear. Uh, and it's gotten me in trouble uh, in, in America from time to time where people point me out of a crowd and say, uh, uh, where's the funeral or something like that. Yeah. You know, so I wanted to explain myself a little. You're not particularly dark person are you? I mean, your songs are I have my dark side uh, I'm people who know me know that I'm I get very moody I uh, get very depressed sometimes uh, and uh, so you know to, to know me is to know that mm. you know you're, you're someone who has uh, reinvented yourself throughout your career I mean clearly your music taste has evolved as well during that time um, well, you might be surprised to know what my musical taste was growing up. You know, I, I came from a very eclectic family. I came from a multicultural family. My father is Puerto Rican. My mother is German and Swedish. Uh, we grew up listening to jazz, Motown, rock and roll, the Beatles, pop music, um, a lot of Latin music, a lot of like Santana. Um, so I grew up with just all different kinds of music and I've always been enthusiastic about all of it. Mm -hmm. um, and rap music sort of evolved um, in the 80s, and I, and I was interested in it back then. You know, I could probably sing you Run DMC's Tricky, you know, if you want oh, to please hear. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it's tricky to rock or rhyme to rock or rhyme. That's right on time. It's tricky. I know you were in Austin um, last month for South by Southwest. Yeah. Uh, to perform in the tribute to, to Lou Reed. Yeah. Fellow New Yorker, obviously. Yeah, yeah. I'd like to know, well, first, what song did you do? and how much did Lou Reed mean to you as a, an artist? Lou Reed meant a huge amount to me. Um, Lou Reed was the first gig I ever actually saw. Um, I was 19 years old and I, I had performed a lot by then, but I, was, I never went out to see other people sing. Um, so I went on a date and he, this guy had an extra ticket and he said, do you want to see Lou Reed? And I said, who's that? And he said, he's the, this guy from the Velvet Underground. So I went to see this performance and it was very dramatic, and he was uh, in his shooting up phase. He was pretending to shoot up on stage, and, and I'm assuming he was pretending, I mean. Um, and he was throwing cigarettes at the audience, lit ones, and the audience was yelling back, and it was very confrontational. Um, but what I came away with was, was the songs, you know, the writing of the songs and the stuff he was singing about. And uh, I never forgot it. 
And I became kind of a Lou Reed, um, well, fan, and I followed him all around New York. Every time he played in New York, I was there. Um, over the years, I got to know him a little bit, and we became friends. And in the last few years of his life, I also know Lori Anderson, his wife. So I would go to their house in the afternoons, and we began to email each other and text each other. And that's one of my dearest things that I have is, yeah. is my texts from, from Lou Reed. So what's next for Suzanne Vega? Well, continuing touring, probably tour, tour, tour for the rest of this year. Mm -hmm. um, as I said, I've got a batch of songs that I'd started before, so maybe I'll get to finish those. Um, so not an, another seven years before I don't think it'll be another again? seven. It'll be either, either I'll just leave the business entirely or, or it'll be more like two years. Yeah. Um, so we'll see about that.